We're just gonna start with the eyeball here. We're done. You guys followed, right? Step one's pretty easy, huh? So, now we are back for the part two of this great tutorial series. Hopefully you guys are enjoying yourself. These are all being uh, filmed on the same day, so I have to just assume you guys liked the video, and we were like, man, I, I can't wait for more tutorials. This totally didn't blow up in your face because you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> And we're just going to keep that positivity today, all right? So right now, what we're going to do is I'm going to kind of grayscale the eyeball so you guys can kind of see how to make it pop um, with some coloring. And then we're going to try to turn that into color. I usually would just go into color, but grayscale practice actually really helped a lot for understanding values. Um, and the issue with people is we really got to understand the difference between values. So I can show you right here. The scale from here to here versus color, if I if I could spell and not have my handwriting look so bad, and color, which is the whole spectrum here. You want to kind of correlate the two so that when you have a darker color, you're at a darker value. If I turn this all to black and white, I'd want to be able to tell the detail of the eye pretty well in your values and it's a really weird thing to understand at first but like it's really simple when you get it down the more you practice with just drawing in grayscale and understanding values the more you know oh you just want the color in a dark value or you want it in a light value so that when you turn it black and white you can still understand the image uh, and they kind of go hand in hand so you don't have to think about it too hard to in my opinion but you're still gonna wanna know what you're talking about. So right now, we're gonna do, we're gonna lay down a base color. Now normally, you know, you just fill it in uh, kind of separately. That's what I would normally do. But since we're doing this, I'm just going to grab a watercolor brush. That's what I like to use when I start. Uh, this way I can get my values down. And there's still some hard edges, because you don't want everything to have you want it to be too soft because then it makes the image look unfocused so it's the difference between this we got like a lot of tutorial, tutorials for understanding it's the difference between this you can see the hard edge here versus this where there's no hard edge so I always like to start with this first and then try to smooth it out later and you can think you try to smooth it out so we're just going to grab that mid value like I had here um, we're probably just going to brighten it from here. This mid value. Let's get the whole eyeball. Try not to let my brain to get me. So, we have colored this whole thing in. So, just make sure you get that done. And now, what we're going to do is we're going to try to separate the parts of the eye from values. Um, and then the way you can kind of tell if it works, in my opinion, is if you take away the line art you can almost see the image without the line art. Uh, so, let's start from here. Let's go a little bit darker here. Just a little bit. Honestly, it should just be in the grays, but yeah. A little bit darker. And what we're going to do here, so I'm just going to come over here. So this is an obvious spot. We know the eyelid, um, as you can see right here in our reference. It's a bit darker. Let me go here. And then right here, so this is going to be a bit darker. This is going to be a bit lighter. And then the eyeball, we're going to make, it's a kind of separate thing for itself. But we're just going to go outside the eyeball for two seconds. Go over here, come with this, here. And then underneath the eye, a little bit of shadow. And as you can see, um, your values kind of already make images pop. 
I'll also, if you think your image is a little bit weird, flip it and it can let you know what your art piece would look like kind of to somebody else at the moment. Because we can kind of get blind while we're drawing art. I hate when that happens. I hate it so much. <laughs> so we're going to do that. I have that here underneath where the eyelid is. And then up here, through the shadows. Kind of round that out a little bit so it goes with the eyebrow. And then now we're going to play with some highlights. Actually, I can, I can do this part real quick. Right here on the edge. Right here on the edges. Make it a little darker. Alright. So you guys can see it, I'm pretty sure now. It looks like it's almost like actually caving in. Which is really cool. I love, I love playing with values. And then we'll go up here. Brighten that here. Brighten near the eyebrow. Because it's, it's a bit... This sinks in. This comes out. So let me let me try to explain it. Um, here real quick. So I really want to be in like help you guys like understand completely. So the eye would be coming out here, with the brow, and then you'd have the eyeball here. Whatever. Yeah. I'm not gonna go too crazy in that. But the light would be hitting this here, which is the reason why the eyebrow would have a highlight here. So, eyebrow would be. And then here as well, the light would be hitting. So then we'd have highlight here. And then right here at the last part, which we're about to highlight a bit, light would also be hitting. It's catching. Depending on where your lighting is, it would be catching. And then like if you were doing like glowing from under, it'd be the reverse. So it'd be like here. I'm gonna do a different color. If you were like coloring from below here and then here and then underneath the eyelid so you know just play around your lighting you'll figure out a little bit more but that way hopefully the diagram at least this one to be easier with just light coming down you'd be hitting these certain parts so let's keep going we're gonna do this one over here I'm on pencil now. Either I guess either way that works, as long as it makes it a little rough. There we are here. Can smooth that out a little bit. And you can really see the difference in tones. And it really sets values and kind of uh you can see with the crevices where the eye starts to pop out a little bit. So now we're gonna get to the eyeball. Now, the issue what a lot of people do is they make it completely white, like this. And the issue with this is it flattens the image. And the eyeball, as you can see over here, isn't white. If I click on this, it's gray. It's like way mid-gray. And lighting does change the situation, but as you can see here, the light is in front of this lady's eye. So, even with the light, it's kind of a grayish color. Now when you're drawing kind of in a stylized tone, you don't necessarily have to make it like deep gray like this, but as I'm going to show you, drawing with some grays is a bit better. I like to make it a bit different than the rest of the eye, so we're going to make it a little bit lighter than it was in the actual eye over there, just so you can see the difference within the values. But we definitely want to add some shading to the eyeball. Now it's a sphere. If you if you haven't drawn a sphere before, haven't shaded a sphere, I would recommend you know doing that. We want to make sure on the edges that the light is hitting directly at the eye. That the edges over here are kind of shaded. I'm trying to do this in a better, <laughs> in a more simple form. Uh, let me do the airbrush for this. We want to make sure that the eye here is shaded this way. So the sphere looks like it's more in depth. You do that. If you're wondering how I just did that, um, I just press protect alpha and protect alpha only let you color inside of things you've already colored down. So if I did a little dot here outside of protect alpha, just the dot dot here and press that you can 
you know, only color in that, it only goes there, or, you know, everything on the layer only goes there. Okay? So to make sure right, no one gets too confused, or if you feel like you want to keep your uh, shading and stuff within a parameter, you can just do the protect alpha right there. So what we're going to do here, we have the eyeball and its shade, and we're going to show the shadow from the top eyelid here and as you can see it's adding a layer to the eye we didn't have before it looks more realistic doesn't it <laughs> it's weird isn't it it's so trippy I feel like art is mainly about illusion you're making an illusion of an eyeball so what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna go a little bit lighter than the shade we have up here and give the sides some color a little bit so that way it looks like the eye is shaded on the sides it's more of a sphere and then here would be uh, what is the word for it does it say the word here is the tear duct yes the tear duct okay you'd be the tear duct over here so I would just I'm just gonna separate this off and make it a bit darker uh, the tear ducts usually not that dark but I want the values to look different so I'm just gonna go with that here let's set so then right now we kind of almost have a finished eye which just wouldn't be in color at the moment and then for the pupil I'm just gonna pick some different color some different value shade just do that and then I'm going to do a darker shade for the top of the eyelid there and you can see it really looks like an eye and then we're gonna add some lighter values because this part of the eye would be you know the top of the circle if you were shading a circle there's gonna be a highlight this is this would be the brightest part now I might go a little bit closer to white not all the way there yet but sort of and then balance this out. Usually I change my opacity lower. I'm just not completely thinking because it's a tutorial. Uh, next time I'll script myself so that way I sound a little bit more professional. Shade the ends of this. That. And then put an overall shade so it's not so obvious. Contrast the eye is. And as you can see it really looks like an eyeball. Now here's a really, really cool touch when you get to this part, um, when you have the icon already shaded. We go over here to the line art. I'm going to change the color of the line art so it looks more uh, accurate, I guess. This, change that. Change that. And the red that we had. Yeah, it really looks like an eye, doesn't it? It's trippy. I'm going to go above the line art, which is what I like to do. And I saw this in the Sakimi Chan uh, tutorial. Hers are pretty helpful as well. Do it right here. You do the little highlight here. You just make the highlight small. You don't have to make it big. I mean, if you want to do the anime like that, it's up to you. It's not really going to change too much. If you do the really small one, like right over the pupil, it really adds a kind of glossy look to it. And the more highlights you have, the more the eyeball looks like it's sort of wet, like an eyeball would be. So I put one on the white of the eye to make it look like the white of the eye is a bit moist. And then one on the pupil, because usually everybody, you know, we like to make the highlights in the pupil. You can add little circles to make the light look different. Um, another thing I see people do is right here near the bottom of the eyelid, you can highlight that. I actually need to do that more than adds quite a look. It makes it look a bit more moist. Which you can also do if your background is like a certain color. Uh, this would be more for people who already know what they're sort of doing. You can add little dots of the color here, like a reflection. And have different tones. Make it look a little different. Like there's a bunch of lights going around. Or in the moment, it's like magical or something. 
not going to do that right now. We're just going to leave the eye how we kind of have it. I'm going to get rid of the... Is it, no, uh, let me leave that. I'm going to get rid of some of the circles here. At least one of them. Honestly, you can do that too. Like, if you cut the light, it makes it look like the light's more squarish. And there you have it. My bad. There you have it. It's kind of a simple eye. And then with the rest of the eyelid over here, you can just kind of shade it in with an airbrush to try to make it look more soft. I've only been mainly using the airbrush, um, the watercolor brush, and then sometimes a pencil brush because it switches over on my freaking drawing tablet. But these two almost have the same effect, so it wouldn't really matter too much. So now with the airbrush, we're going to kind of smooth things out. You want to smooth out everything because uh, then you just kind of lose the sharpness of the image. But you do want to smooth out some of it. Like, I'm going to leave most of the edge here. I'm going to try to round this off. You know, and don't be afraid to screw up a bit. That's the reason why practicing like this is always great. Because you can just doodle, and like, if it doesn't feel right, just try again. Uh, big motto I'm trying to push is, it's whatever. Because uh, failure only makes us better. It's, I only got better, as some people like to put it. Because I sucked so much when I started. <laughs> and I had to just keep practicing, and keep trying, and keep going. You're not going to be amazing in a day, but you definitely can grow pretty fast. I started drawing uh, this year, and if you think I'm a decent artist, well then you probably could catch me. Just keep it up. <laughs> keep it up. A lot of people I know are like way better than I am, and I really want to catch up to them. And so I just have to keep it in mind, like, I'm getting there, I'm doing it, we'll get there eventually. Just keep practicing, work on the stuff you need to work on. Right now I'm doing a nose study or nose studies, because noses feel really weak to me, in my opinion. I'm adding an extra shade here, so it just makes it look a bit deeper. Probably going to do a little bit of an overshade with the original shadow, so it looks a little bit more blent in. Not too like, glaring, but you can tell it's a bit darker. And there we kind of are. That's pretty much it for the eyeball. You can smooth out the eyeball if you want here with the airbrush. And it probably look better if you do it. But it kind of adds a painting style. It makes it look... You can kind of tell it's painted if you leave the watercolor there. It's kind of up to you there. But yeah. Um, no. I hope you guys really enjoyed. I hope this actually helped. If it did, be sure to leave it in the comments. If you feel like you were a little bit confused about something, you know, leave me a question in the comments. So I can try to help you out. And thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. Really